Hi, my name is Joe Painter. This is What's the Story? And I wanted to find out what is the story with altogether art, which is better than all apart art. Altogether art is in the silk mill. It is, isn't it? It's the fairy silk mill that was famous for dolphin and lingerie. Oh, dolphin over swimwear. Years. I believe so. Get out. But the fairy silk mill is specific to silks and dyeing silks, specifically for the lingerie world. It leads you right to Paris. That's where their history lies. Which is why you are there. This, meet Jane Runyon. Jane, you have a story to tell. You're, you're from this area and then I you am. came back. I did. On your way to Paris. Absolutely. Uh, we're so happy. <laughs> Truly we are. And I'm very happy to be here. I wasn't yes. as sure as I am now when I was 28 years old, but it's turned out to be wonderful. Take me back. I'm what 29 happened? now. <laughs> <laughs> so take me back to last year. What happened when you were 28? I uh, was asked to take over Harry Casares' uh, department head at Albright College. Uh, he was not well, and they were... Uh, looking for somebody that could step in midstream and work with the students. So they hired me, and I worked at Albright for 10 years. I'm going to ask the obvious question, head of which department? Art? Psychology. Design? <laughs> <laughs> you just got to make sure. Well, see. Fine art. Drawing and painting, of course. You're going to get painting. business in there. That's going to be yeah. part of this, isn't it? It is. It is. Okay, so you head up the art department. I was part of the art department for 10 okay. years. But you weren't sure you wanted to do that? No, I, I had been trained. I'd gotten a Master of Fine Arts degree. And no, I really thought I was going to be a college professor. And I think early on I felt oh. so uh, excited about sort of that final stamp of approval. Yeah. So when somebody's not sure what it is you do, it's like, I mean, you're in trouble if you have to go like, well, I'm a professor, you know, don't question me. <laughs> and I say, do question me. But I was excited to go through graduate school, get a PhD. I was never, uh, I was always an okay to good student, but to mm -hmm. achieve that was a lot. So no, I thought my road was to be a college professor. And I'm so I was. I was at the University of Colorado before I came to Albright College and um, have never looked back, but my story took many different turns, which was wonderful. I am so surprised to hear that that's what you wanted to be, a college professor. And maybe I'm surprised because I was just at your open house in Shillington. Yes. Oh, your jaw drops. I was in awe, the artwork that you have on display. And in s such a variety. Yes. So, First of all, how would you describe your art, and isn't that what you always wanted to do? I was always going to create artwork. Okay. I, I, I don't know if it's the chicken or the egg, but I look back at third, fourth, fifth grade, and I would be doing little still lifes on my desk. I would, uh, and I have a very artistic mother. I grew up with theater and music, and the Museum of Modern Art in my background. So when somebody wonders how our family became so many artists, both of my parents are great supporters of the arts. So I was exposed to a lot of wonderful things very early. Were they artists as well? No. Or just enjoyed the arts? My mother would say that the four of us are her artwork. And I'd ah, say she'd be so right. <laughs> she could paint very well. She helped with the public relations at the Reading Civic Opera. Okay. So the reason I could sing that song with you earlier about there's no business like show business is that I was really part of that. And my mother was a um, headed so the public relations for the Reading Civic mm -hmm. Opera. My father and my grandfather Reading ran the Reading... Um, musical foundation for umpteen years so my interest in the arts was obvious and it eventually came back to be that I found the civic responsibility huge because you can make a difference in a mm -hmm. town this size so that's part of my love of being here again. So being mentored by and growing up in that artist community Absolutely. Was that a huge influence for you and how you, you obviously think that's very important to maintain that for the community or to well, usher in young artists? 
Absolutely all the above. Mm -hmm. For people to know that they have the ability to make a difference, whether it's through their creativity. I mean, I think of the wonderful, um, was it the Salsa Festival? Yes. That yes. was amazing. That, that wa along the riverfront? That wandered yeah. through that. And I was involved with the Scenic River Days. Oh, I, I did, remember I did that. the yeah. um, murals and that kind of thing. Now, it's true, I haven't been as involved in the last 15 years uh, as I was, but my phrase is now I'm lost in Shillington because I have a very active business and I have artwork to do for exhibitions that travel, that kind of thing. Are you commissioned so, at this point? I am sometimes, yes. I actually have a wonderful commission right now. I do stained glass, large-scale stained glass for corporate placement. You could see some of it at the Reading Hospital. Oh, I have a stained okay. glass window in the um, end building in the orthopedic unit. So, I'm going to yes. make a visit. Yeah, so my work is varied. The reason my company is called All Together Art mm -hmm. is that I find that there's been, not unlike the community of doctors, and my father was a doctor, that's why I make that metaphor, but I love that it's not a life or death thing that I do, but that it we've missed the point that a painting belongs in a certain space and I love coordinating with the architect, the designer, um, the, the landscape architects, so that it comes together and it's all framed beautifully. And all together also means that I want to look at other artists and other disciplines. And I love that conversation about how we go about a project. You have art, and you talk about other disciplines, and I, I honestly am, am at a loss for words for the particular mediums. But you had some pieces, they were beautiful. You had a frame, and then you found uh, perhaps an old picture and a newspaper clipping, and then you put it all together. I don't know what you would call that type of art. You'll but love was, this it, mixed media. Oh, <laughs> that's, right, that's what we do. Okay, say, say M. <laughs> mixed media is what that's called. There's, there's many different categories. Okay. And just like any field, you know, somebody says, I remember when I first started seeing my husband, he go like, we don't know what an eagle is. And I'm like, a bird? No, a really good golf shot. A couple under par. You know. oh, but, but I think any okay. field has that. And for some reason, our educational system in a lot of ways has missed... Um, the boat on really educating so people aren't intimidated by both abstraction. Abstraction has gone on so the cave, man, it's nothing, a new idea. But uh, there is a certain um, attitude that's brought forward that I am not a fan of. It's like, come in, talk to me about this artwork. And my favorite is when a student who's done this has said, I could do that. Are you kidding me? And it was a Henry Matisse cutout because part of his work looks easy. And I like that because then you go like, well, maybe I could do that. And you look at, you know, Frederick Church paintings at the Reading Museum and you're like, I definitely can't do that. <laughs> but the same so, kind. Same and so kind. modern art has a lot to do with allowing the viewer to at first get an idea of what, how did that get put together? And if it's something as simple as seeing like an old, uh, what would you say, like a, I have some pieces that have, um, license plates in them. Yes, I saw right? that. And, so, and keys, too. Absolutely. Well, I love the yeah. metaphor of a key. What can you unlock? All sorts of things. Oh, but it's I, beautiful. So, yeah. You, you used a word, and I, I'm really glad that you said it. You don't want people to be intimidated. And so often we are because, well, we don't know the name of the medium. We're not sure what we're looking at. We're not sure what we're supposed to do with that. Um, maybe we're at a loss because we don't have that creative vein. Sure. So uh, you dispelled that very nicely at your open house at All Together Art because it was just so welcome. It was a whole lot of fun. And I was amazed at the amount of artwork. You're prolific. I think she, this woman stays up all night and does artwork. I am very driven. I don't think I ever have to worry. Is that muse going to dry up? I've been interviewed before and I said that I... If in my lifetime I can do 20% of what I really have in my mind to create or to express, that would be a, a success. Where do you get the inspiration? What inspires you? Uh, it can be as simple as two popsicles and the colors together that are just so beautiful in the sunlight. 
It can be as simple as walking in the woods with my dog. Mm -hmm. It can be seeing two kinds of spices at the Lancaster Market together that are the most beautiful two reds, that those two colors can inspire me. And wow. sometimes it goes the reverse that somebody has said, you're so creative, Jane. Maybe your company could come in and look at our advertising and give us a new idea of a new approach. So, And I am always a fan of that. Right. And so my company is incorporates a lot of different creative things. It's not just, my artwork certainly is the driving force, but ultimately I went to the I went to NYU and studied business as well. I didn't get degrees, but I- Business? I just That's went, such a departure from well, the creative. Well, it's, it's completely a different thing. Why did you study it? Because I was not just going to be a um, starving artist, no thank you. Uh -huh. And, at so those end, words don't have to go and together, absolute, starving an artist. And you know what's the most exciting thing? Mm -hmm. I can actually help artists that really can't do that. And that fulfills me at the end of the day. I go, I made a difference in their lives. And I help them to create something like a portrait or something that I'm not really interested in or help somebody plan a mosaic tile floor. And that's not really my specialty. So I bring in people and other artists that that is their specialty. Mm -hmm. And I'll manage the project, and I'll make sure that the client's happy. And my favorite story is when they say, I hope we don't have to meet the artist, right? I'm like, oh, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> and, sometimes no, no. That, and sometimes that's me, and sometimes right. that's not me. And I don't think that I'm tricking them, but sometimes it is. But it's often a collaboration, and that's why it's called All Together Art. So anybody that's watching and listening to this right now, and loves to draw, loves to paint, loves to create, but is kind of stuck and they're going, but I can't do that. I have to be a bookkeeper or do something else because I can't pay my bills with this. What, what advice do you have? I would say keep your day job always mm -hmm. because actually one of the things I've noticed with the liberal arts education not being as strong today that people are so focused on, but then how am I going to go from A to B? This will sound idealistic, but I think it's really important. Ultimately, my artwork has to speak, it has to be so clear, it has to be uh, something that touches somebody's right. heart, right. and they go like, oh my gosh, if I have that in my everyday life, maybe I'll be a better person, or maybe that'll match my sheets beautifully, right. whatever right. their reasons are. But I think you have to remember, ultimately, that Every part of your life feeds into your life. Mm -hmm. And I always will say, if you can really make great bread, go make great bread. Because doing that well is gonna create uh, a, you're gonna have stability, which you need. Desperate is never interesting. Desperate right. is awful. Right. Right. And if you haven't figured out that, a way to really do all of the above, then you haven't really figured out a way to have a balanced life. So I keep mean, feeding the passion. Of course, that doesn't go away okay. if it's to be. The thing that gets tricky, without a doubt, is finding the time to compete in the real art world where people are putting in 40 to 60 hours a week. You can't get into that market. And you know what? People know excellence. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of amateurs that would like to be professionals. But the reality is that you have to come up with some sort of balance and you have to be really disciplined. You have done an excellent Job of doing that. <laughs> all together art. So is your gallery open all the time? Not at all. That my space in Shillington is really my workspace. And it's a nice workspace. It's a great workspace. <laughs> but it, you for saw inspiration. It yes, I you did. have to come over when it's like, wow, <laughs> can we walk in here? I, it's um, that's why I say every five to seven years I really clean it up. I like for people to see what it is that really goes on there. And the reason you saw such a wide variety of work, I, I probably have five themes that have inspired me forever. The woods, of course, the magic of the woods and the many mm -hmm. literary things. I've also um, been always inspired by water. Some of this stuff is not like, wow, of course, most everybody's goes, wow, that glittering water is so beautiful. It's not like there's these mind boggling things that but you but, take that and you make something out and, of it. And that. ultimately, the deal is really about just continuing down that road in a steady, consistent way. I often will say, you know, this is years ago is to my students, but I always have, I still have students, either interns or whatever, and I just say, you know, you're, 
it's like being an athlete. If you don't do the homework and you can't do the 50 sit-ups, right. how in the world do you think that you have the, a paint brush stroke that's going to really be powerful, really going to be important? So it's funny that everybody separates the artist as though, oh, it's this other thing over there. The reality is as a whole to, lot of it. A practiced A art. whole lot yeah. of it is not unlike the discipline of what you do. You stay at it so you're good at interviewing and your voice is fabulous and you know, you just, it's the same thing. The Hone your craft. Absolutely. You've done it very well and I am so <laughs> grateful and I know many are that you yeah. settled here in Berks County. To I'm happy to art. be here. Yes. Thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. No, I'm <laughs> say, same run.